There's been this question that has been in my head for ages, and it's about the current state of Fortnite. You see, there's a lot of furries who play this game, including me, but this comes to the question of why that's even the case, and when did all these furry skins pop up? In order to answer this question, we shall start from the very beginning in the summer of 2017, when it was just a zombie survival game that no one cared about until September, where they released the game that would become very major in terms of revolutionizing the game industry with the popularization of Battle Royale, Battle Pass systems, and the merging of popular icons within the game for more appeal. You see, I remember the first time downloading this game and playing it on the very first day the Battle Royale came out because it was just that much of a major deal when it came out. Unfortunately, the build mode, which albeit was a creative way to stick out in this genre, was a mode that I couldn't really get the grasp of. So I stopped playing. For years. A couple years ago, when I was consistently streaming, I got back into Fortnite when some of my friends got into it. And after that was over and done with, I was very much still into the game and even started to make it my thing. The question I've wanted to ask myself was, why now? Why did I get back into this game and make it one of my most played games of all time with me putting hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game? Yes, a large part of that was because they gave another option where you don't have to build, but there is a completely different reason that kept me coming back for more. By the way, I know hundreds of hours doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind that gaming is not that much of a passion for me when compared to movies and music, so me spending a hundred hours in one game means that I really adore it. Either way, the thought never really came to mind until I realized the thing that brought me and so many others into this game was because of the many inclusions of anthropomorphic characters that they added in consistently. They, it just really kept us furries fed, and it's led to a curation of so many different furry groups that I know of who really enjoy this game. From streamers to creators to just people who like playing these characters coming together to await the next furry character. Hell, there's even a Twitter account with over 10,000 followers that gives updates on the different furry characters they add to the shop every single day. Now that's influence. That's legitimate power this game has over us. I don't really know where it came from or what started it, but I just wanted to talk about it in this video because it's just so interesting. The very first Anthro character to appear in a Fortnite Battle Pass seems to be DJ Yonder and Dyer from Season 6 in September 2018. Dyer was a full moon werewolf skin for the white guy in the game and DJ Yonder was just a DJ of the very popular donkey icon that the game utilized. More over time though, iconic characters that people think of like Phoenix, Wendell, Polar Patroller, and a lot more weren't added till like much later, starting in the year 2019, but more on that later. The origins of why this game got so many furry characters is hard to track down because so many people are involved with the creation of this game and the many updates that come with it, which illustrate how wide this game's potential is. But it's not hard to assume that some of the people involved in the making of the game are fans of the furry designs, aka the furries. I did a bit of research to try to find someone who was directly involved with the game process that may or may not be a furry, and I have a theory. <laughs> it's not really, it's bad, it's a bad theory. Okay, it's this guy named Dave the Buck who made posts on Reddit regarding updates that were made in this game around four years ago. Which was around the time that people started to notice that this game was becoming more and more furry related. He was the PLM campaigns manager at Epic Games, and keep in mind that this is just a theory because there's no direct quote saying that he's actually a furry and more of a comment that I saw someone make on Reddit and decided that it was a reliable enough source to just put in this video. But looking at his Twitter account, I only accepted this theory because the guy has a deer tattoo. Not even saying that means he's a furry, but it's like all I really have for whether or not furries were directly involved in the making of the game. At least for now. Well, if it isn't the people who made the game, then what was it? One thing I noticed is that the company is becoming more and more aware that a ton of furries play their games with how much they cater to us with their characters. They love to promote the release of these characters on their social media accounts and have started to add them to the battle passes more often. Previously mentioned, right after 2019, the characters on these battle passes are usually original characters that 
they come up with, although they also get some of their ideas from concept art, as we'll get into later. They also have hired furry artists for some of the loading screens, like this one of Oscar being made by Squiddy. There are these subtle furry ties like this that I can't help but notice. But let's go ahead and talk about what I meant by them getting ideas from concept art. One example is Meowskulls. Who- or is it Meowskulls? It's probably Meows- Meowskulls. Who was created based on concept art drawn by Rex and was released in 2020. I'm not sure who chooses the characters for these games, but I know for a fact that there are people who are hired to create art for the game itself, with some of these character designs being Anthro. Also, a random fun fact, apparently Meow Souls had a fling with another original character named Lynx, in which they had a child named Kit. Um, they broke up afterwards. And, uh, you know, to think that these characters have canonical sex with each other is, is trippy already, and it makes me... Once again, want to ask questions on whether or not they know. <laughs> In order to answer the question of where all these furry skins came from, let's look at these surveys, in which they showcase a ton of concept art that people can choose from starting in 2022, in which people voted for different skins, and as you can see, some of these skins are anthro characters. That's how a lot of furry skins get added in the first place, like Oscar, the orange dinosaur, Rufus. These are just some of the characters that the community voted for. So as you can see, some of it is not even them purposefully attracting furries. We just have that much of an influence on how many furries get added into this game, which I think is amazing. It just it's just absolutely hilarious, if I'm, if I'm gonna be honest. The theory to the mystery of how so many furry characters got added comes from the fact that the surveys probably hold a significant amount of power in what gets chosen to be put in the game. So I guess the furriness isn't from the concept art or the people who make the game being furries themselves, it's because people voted for these character designs to be put in the game. I mean, yeah, the people who make the art could be furries themselves, but that's not the reason they're added. We are. Unless there's some other random thing someone else brings up that makes me dig even deeper, wink wink, like the fact that I talked about the surveys being added in 2022, but people noticed how furry the game became in 2019. <laughs> this leaves room for more theory. A game theory. Anyways, this was just a quick little video I wanted to make for March. It's a question I had in my mind for a while. Um, very difficult question to answer, but I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you have any other evidence to why it could be the case there's so many furry skins added, comment down below. <laughs> give, give me more evidence so I can make another video out of this. Thank you.